is the premier of China, Wen, makes a speech out of the blue, and he warns the country about a return to Maoism. All right? He makes a few oblique comments that we can't allow this to happen. The next day, the mayor of Chongqing, whose name I now know very well, Bo Lai, gets nailed. Out of the blue. I mean, why did he get nailed? All of a sudden, okay? And you hear rumors. Oh, he is mal, you know, opaque. Because they don't let anybody say anything. All right? And then Asia Times Online has a story that comes out about it. And they quote a news agency in New York called Meijing News. All right? And these, they say, this is what has happened. All right? Bozi Lai, the mayor of Chongding, was gunning for power. And this guy is good looking. He's got the looks. All right? Young. For the Chinese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the Chinese. And he had somehow made his way from Shanghai to the mayor of da to Dalian. I know that city very well. I went there a lot. From there, he got transferred out to Chong uh, Chongqing and, and was very popular. Very, very popular. All right? And all of a sudden, his legs got cut out from underneath him. Okay? And everybody's going, what? And the story came out like this. His police chief, the one who ran for cover at the American embassy, named Mr. Wong, all right, had followed him from Dalian to Chongqing and was known as an anti-corruption reformer. They had shot a bunch of people in Chongqing, a bunch of triad people. Everybody goes, oh, the guy's cleaning up the city. Well, they failed to mention, true, they did kill a lot of triad members, and they kept one who was the boss of bosses who had connections in Macau. All right? That the quote unquote clean hardliner had a billion dollars <coughs> recently transferred out of China into the United States. All right? But let me give you some history on Bo Zi Lai. Bo Zi Lai's father. What we're seeing here is the sons of the Chinese hierarchy. All right, the children of those hardliners that made it through, fought the Japanese, fought the Kuomintang, and arose on top. This was a generation that knew the battlefield. They knew hardship, they knew coming from nothing, and they took over the most populous country on the face of this earth. All right, they gave rise to a generation that are now known in China as the princelings. All right? Now, there's a tremendous amount of resentment in China about the princelings. China was formed on a Marxian basis, the same rice bowl. All right? Well, they were eating out of the same rice bowl, but it appears that some people had forks and spoons, some people had chopsticks, and one only had one chopstick. All right? As the Chinese thing is this, it's all about family. It's truly all about family. And who can you trust and you can't trust. There is something so destructive in China about power. There is so something so onerous about the, how the Chinese play the game. Because family is critical. During the Cultural Revolution, children stood up and denounced their parents denounce their parents. All right? Bo Zi Lai denounced his father. His father was one of the old guards. All right? I think his father understood that his son had to denounce him. All right? But the excesses of the Cultural Revolution, when they let the hardliners run free, Bo Zi Lai's mother was beaten to death in jail for being a counter-revolutionary. I was in China in 1983 with Diane Feinstein. All right? We were at a banquet. And I was there, Chinese banquets, 10 to a table. There were three women sitting at that table. They all had white hair. They all had a demeanor to them. It was rather remarkable when I found out what had happened. These three women had been in the same prison during the Cultural Revolution. All right? 
And there they were, eating dinner with us. And the mayor of San Francisco and the mayor of Shanghai. And you couldn't tell them. I don't know if they didn't harbor a grudge. I don't know if they just assumed this is the way politics are played in China, where it's blood, all right? But it's brutal, all right? Bozi Lai denounced his father, okay? His father came out after being denounced, after the Cultural Revolution was over, and retained his position of power. He was one of the old boys, the good old boy network, all right? Bozi Lai's father is famous because after the Tiananmen Square crackdown, he recommended force. He was a hardliner. Bozi's life's father wanted to take those students out with the tanks and the troops. All right? After Tiananmen, Tiananmen was a watershed event in China. All right? And like every society, it's fragmented. It's like the United States is fragmented. No country's alike. Germany went to war, they were fragmented. All right? Every country, every town is fragmented. China was fragmented after Tiananmen, but the hardliners won out. Zhang Zemin was appointed premier. And this is what's really outrageous. This is wonderful to see what happened because you can never tell. The, premier, the person who was appointed premier after, after Zhang, after Tiananmen, okay, was Zhang Zemin. The man in power before Zhang was a man named Zhou. He wanted dialogue with the, with the students. He went to talk to them before they sent in the troops. He spent his life under house arrest until he died. Zhang Zemin was at the top of the heap. Zhang Zemin put three people in power. He put a man named you, I don't know, I can't believe Wang Kofeng or something, in Shanghai. So he was a conservative party, because now we're talking hardliners. We're talking conservative Republicans in the patois of American politics. All right, the military industrial, the military boys. They put a hardliner in Shanghai. That hardliner in Shanghai saw, and he took Bo Zilai under his wing because he knew Bo's father. Bo Zilai, the good-looking guy, rose up under his tutelage, okay? So he had Zhang Zemin, who eventually stepped down, was replaced by Wen, who was sort of a moderate, and the old hardliner was there in Shanghai. Bo Zilai, younger, is the next generation, and there was another man that Zhang put in power named Zi, XI, I don't know how to pronounce it. This man, Z is supposed to be the next premier in China. So you can see the influence of Zhang Jimin. He's got a hardline old party boss in Shanghai running sort of his hand on the till. Deep connections in the army. They don't like a lot of the wealth that's happened. They don't like a lot of the corruption that's happened. All right? You don't know it. But the National Party Congress, 70 of the members are billionaires. You think money corrupts in the United States? Wherever there's money, it corrupts. And there's a lot of money in China right now. All right? So Zhang Zemin puts the hardliner in charge. He's got a hardliner in charge in Shanghai. Okay? I think his name is Wow, whatever, whatever it is. His protege is Bo Zilai, who he knows his father. And then you've got the next premier of China destined to succeed when at the next party congress in October. But guess what happens? Guess what happens? And it involves the police chief and Bo Lai. Last October, Bo Lai went on a rampage of anger. He was just pissed. And the police chief taped it. All right? He went after everybody. He really felt he was the chosen. He could lead China through. Everybody was corrupt or weak. And in this rampage, he went and referred to Zhang Zemin. I mean, the guy, the guy who was premier at Tiananmen. The guy who was the godfather, the patriarch. 
The guy's hand has now even got his protege coming to the next premiership this, this fall. And Bozy Lai goes, this man is the Empress Dowager. A woman. But the Empress Dowager in China was known as the power behind the throne. She may have been a woman, but she ran things. All right? So he said, that's who Zhang Ziman was. Basically, like a woman who ran things behind the thing. This is on tape. <laughs> All right? Then, the guy in Shanghai, he nailed him too. All right? Then he went down the line. The new premier. Weak. He's a figurehead. The theory was they were going to bring Bozy Lai into the National Party Congress this time. There was a lot of antipathy towards him, though. This is all infighting. This is an old boy network, okay? He was supposed to succeed coming to the Politburo this, th that happened this, this month. That's the next move he was going to do. He had a very strong power base. That's what he was going to do, all right? They were going to wait until Z was appointed in November. Then they were going to have a coup and take him out with the military. Take him out beginning next year. And they would have strength. Everybody was going to be in position. Everybody was waiting for the moment. Not too different when John F. Kennedy was elected president of the United States and was forced to take Lyndon Baines Johnson as his vice president. The Kennedys hated Johnson. Johnson hated the Kennedys. But the Kennedys were told in a phone call that the quid pro quo of them taking power was accepting LBJ as a running mate. Both the Kennedys hated the Federal Reserve. Their father, Joseph Kennedy, raised them to hate the Federal Reserve. John F. Kennedy was elected president within a, that first year. And for the last 50 years, that was 1963, the Federal Reserve took power in 1913 in the United States. Before the Federal Reserve took power, all the money, all the currency was issued out of the Treasury. Out of the Treasury. The Federal Reserve took over 50 years of debt-based money coming out of the Federal Reserve until Kennedy took power. When Ken Kennedy took power, he issued the first money out of the Treasury in 50 years, silver-backed currency. Silver-backed currency. Within six months, he was dead. Johnson took power, pulled all the silver-backed currency back out of circulation, and sold the silver stocks to the United States. So it never happened again. It left one brother who they knew also hated the Federal Reserve. And some dingbat named Sirhan Sirhan, who nobody can explain, blows him away. This is no different than happened in China. No different at all. When money and power are at stake, the boys are at work. So what happens is they were going to make this move, except Wang, the police chief, had this tape. And everybody in China is like, like this. What I loved about this story, it made me witty a name I knew about and had never run down. His name Lin Biao. Lin Biao had fled, to, fled Russia, fled to Russia, they said, and they called him a traitor. They called him a traitor. We were in China very early on after the, they let in, okay? And the Chinese saw Nixon as a hero. Why did they see Nixon as a hero? Because he opened China's doors to them. All right? Now, me and my partner, we had a very different understanding of Nixon. We hated him. We hated him. Tricky did. All right? So there my partner is in China, in China, and the Chinese are extolling Richard Nixon. And he starts saying these terrible things about him. Just the Chinese, because they're, you know, spoon-fed another story about Nixon. And they said, oh, what do you mean? He's a great man. And Herb goes, he's Lin Biao. And the Chinese were shocked. He's a traitor. Lin Biao was another one of the Communist Party people who came up in that great march with Bo's father, Zhou Enlai, blah, blah, blah. And he kept getting higher and higher in the hierarchy. And he became more and more afraid. Because the higher you got, the more dangerous it was. You never knew when somebody was going to point the finger at you. He had three maxims. No suggestion, no visits, no trouble. 
All right? And he tried to keep his mouth shut. And it didn't work. He tried to flee the country. They ran out of gas. 1953, Lin Biao's dead. The Chinese consider him a traitor. So now you see another thing that's happening. What happened is there were people moving against Bo Zilai because they knew that Bo was out there doing the right, the, trying to get the Red Guards to sing try, and setting himself up as a, as a hero. You don't do that in China. So they were threatened by him. So they started making moves about corruption. This is always a guise. Corruption. Well, everybody's corrupt in China. Virtually. All right? So they start making moves, going after Bo Zilai on corruption. Well, who's this police chief? Wang. All of a sudden, Wang is on the hot seat. He is in getting in trouble. All right? So what does Bo Zilai do? He fires Wang. Cuts him loose. It's getting too close. There's Wang. He's got no protection from anybody. He's hanging out by himself. But he does have this damn tape that nobody knows about. But he doesn't trust anybody. How can you? They're all Chinese. They all look at you up. They all, to your face, are going to be polite. He is scared shitless. He runs to the American Embassy. All right? And they go, oh, this is what the deal is. He's going to let the Americans in on it. The truth was this. He knew that Bo Zilai was going to come after him. He knew that Chongqing people were going to come after him. And he wanted the national police to arrest him. He didn't know what they were going to do to him, but he knew what Bo Zilai was going to do. So he ran to the embassy in January. Everybody goes, oh, oh. And he, he, he disappears. Sort of. So what do we have? Bo Zilai has now disappeared. He's under house arrest or something. All right? Zhang Zemin, the godfather of power in China, has openly criticized his man in Shanghai, openly criticized Bo Zilai, because he knows what side his bread is buttered on. All right? Bo Zilai is toast. All right? He's toast. All right? And China goes on. Fascinating place. Uh, Daryl, one, thing, one question. I heard on some news that one of the old guys, the second in command, is now in a vegetative state, a vegetable. And uh, I don't know if this is true yeah. or not, but they're saying this is a, co a cover-up to some, it's not really true. So I don't know if, if one of those guys you mentioned is just saying <laughs> yeah. that. True in China? You know, they, they, they shut down 16 internet sites and because these people mention rumors of troop movements in China two weeks ago on Monday night. Because they mentioned it. I mean, if you were blogging in China and you heard it, what the hell? This is news. Boom. You better be careful. Everyone in China better be careful. It's dangerous. It's real dangerous. And what I later heard about the source of this, made Jing News out of New York, that it is part of Jiang Jimin's clique, the old power boy, except part of the power base that opposes the hard lines. So even in his group, there are factions leaking news and leaking stories about what's going on. China is real interesting. <laughs> That's what it was like running my family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that if there are no more questions, uh, we, will, we will call it a day. Thanks very much, Daryl, and thanks very much.